Uh, so Kristen Carey is a content strategist and user researcher who's been living and working in Seattle since 2003. She is currently the director of content strategy and SEO at Avo, where her team is responsible for content production organization, product design, and information architecture. And Kate Kiley is a senior content strategist at, uh, at Avo. She got her start at local companies like Pop, Nordstrom.com, and Seattle Magazine. And she continued her career in the Bay Area before returning to Seattle. We're very glad she's back with us and here at World IA Day. Please welcome Kristen and Kate. Hi, everybody. I'm Kristen, and this is Kate, and as Stuart said, we are part of the content strategy team at AVO. Uh, today, we are going to talk to you guys about our IA Guild, and that is a cross-functional team that meets for one hour every week to talk about our IA problems. We don't have a dedicated information architect on staff, and so this is um, how we've come together to kind of uh, solve our, our internal problems. Um, for those of you who aren't familiar with AVO, um, we're in the legal space. We're a legal marketplace that brings together consumers and lawyers. We have a directory full of attorney <coughs> profiles. We have a Q&A forum where anybody can go and ask their legal question for free, and it'll be answered by attorneys. And we also offer fixed price legal services. Um, over the past year, we've added a couple different products and features, um, which we has required us to get a little more serious about the way that we deal with IA. Um, and so we're just going to walk you through um, how we dealt with that and how we solved that. Um, and so when Kate and I were talking about, you know, how did this IA Guild come to be, we were really talking about how it came to be from the ground up. And so um, I googled grassroots organization. Um, and these five steps came up. And so um, I, I think that these really help outline the steps that we went through, although it was really unplanned. This is like us looking back and being like, oh, yeah, that's how that all came to be. Um, so first, I want to give you a brief history of our IA process. And this is um, very much oversimplified. Uh, we used to like design the product, and then maybe we're like in the middle of building it, and then somebody would like ask an awkward question about what should the URL be or where should this live on the site, um, and so it was very much being addressed at the end of the process. Um, it was very much an oh shit moment for the team. Um, it was not an active decision. It was very passive. It was very ad hoc. Often the right people weren't even in on the conversation. And what this left us with is just an IA that wasn't really optimized for either the UX or for the SEO. Um, it just wasn't like as good as it could have been. And so um, knowing that, we kind of set out to create some goals for how we could move to a space um, and make our IA better and, and stronger. Um, <laughs> and so what this looked like was uh, we had an executive basically pull a bunch of us into a boardroom. There's like 20 of us sitting around this table. And I, I do have to give um, that executive credit for knowing what IA is and caring. Um, and, and he basically put these questions up on the board. And he was like, OK, I need you all to go and answer these questions and then come back and tell us what our IA is going to look like. And you know, we're all in the room. We really care about this stuff. We're like, yeah, we're going to give it a go. We'll give it a try. Um, and, and we did organize around these questions. And, and it, it really just left us feeling frustrated and blocked. And when we kind of reflected on why, we, we figured out that it's because a strong IA can help you answer these questions, but answering these questions alone can't really tell you what your IA should look like. Um, and so at that time, we decided to take the project out of the executive's hands. <laughs> and we gave it to people who really depended on what the answers were going to be. And for us, that was our designers and our content strategists. Um, and this was really a pivotal point for us in the process because it shifted the entire conversation. Now the conversation was a UX conversation, and we were talking about our users. Um, and I, I, I put these questions up here, but I guess I, I kind of want to warn you that having three or five questions like this isn't really going to lead you through the process. 
you got to go out into the organization and you got to collect all the problems, which can be really messy and kind of uncomfortable. But once you have all those problems in one place, you can really take a step back from the individual projects that y'all are working on and you get to see the collective problems together. And I think that that really brings into focus what the goals should be. Um, and then at that moment, you're focused on solving the problems of your organization. So the goal is not, let's go create the most perfect, beautiful IA. The goal is, let's solve these problems. And so next, um, you want to form a team. And so for us, what did that team look like? Um, we scoped it down. So there was no longer 20 people in the conversation. Now we're talking like three to five people. Um, we gave that team a lead, and that, that lead was actually Kate. Um, and we find at Avo that um, the people who are doing the work, when they decide what the charter is and the process and who's involved and what the outcomes are, that it takes a little bit more time, but it fosters um, buy-in with that group and ownership um, and really just better ideas. Um, and I really credit Kate's leadership on this um, with kind of helping us see that, that this bottoms up approach was really what was gonna get us the answers that we were looking for. Um, and I wanted to point out, I, uh, I put a screenshot here of the group's charter. And you'll see it says, how content, how content, how we display content. So avo.com is a really content rich site. Um, and so it made a lot of sense for us to put a content strategist to lead that conversation. Um, other sites and other team dynamics might mean that whoever leads your conversation is in a different kind of function. I don't think it has to be a content person necessarily. Um, so you know, whatever works for your, your group, um, whatever's going to get you guys the answers that you need. So really what this did for us is it created this independent group for designers and content people to come and check in with about an about IA, and so it really brought that conversation into the front of the process, which was like totally eye-opening and awesome for us, because that meant that before we even got to the de design phase, we were talking about user flows, and we were talking about edge cases, right? And designers and content people were going into the design phase, understanding how users were coming in to this page or this product, how they were coming out, how the robots were coming in, and where the robots were going next. Um, and it just helped us make so much many better decisions based on like layout, our calls to action, um, our internal linking, our taxonomy, our labels. And then as designers and content folks are making those decisions about labels and all that other stuff, they're coming back to the IA Guild and saying, hey guys, we put this through user research and this is the label we came up with. And then that piece of information gets adopted across the entire site. So um, it, it really changed the way like our entire conversation worked. And the next step is to organize your community. OK, so um, we've created this cross-functional team. And now the first thing that we do is we sit down and figure out how we're going to spend our time. How we're going to spend our time. I'm sorry. got the notes up here. Um, little technical problem here. Sorry about that. So we have our cross-functional group. We sit down, we figure out how we're going to spend our time, how often we would meet, um, what types of projects we're going to take on, and we figure out our engagement model. And we also talk about ro roles and responsibilities. Um, so as Kristen mentioned, um, we started with a bare bones team. Um, I was the lead on the team, so we had content strategy. I worked with my UX counterpart, and now SEO is also a part of that core team. And we invited people in, and we do this on a regular basis. We invite people in who have an interest in a an IA who have skills to bring to the table and also the people who are working on the projects that we're addressing in the guild that week. 
And we also identified our stakeholders and figured out how we were going to communicate um, out about our decisions and our recommendations. So as the facilitator of this conversation, I had to figure out how do we get started? How do we have focused and really productive conversations? And how do we make IA a community project? That was really the big one. Um, I think probably all of us can relate to um, this feeling that IA is so huge that you it just becomes intangible. It's also scary, like you move one thing and then everything else shifts around. Um, and the truth is, is that spreadsheets work for people. That's fine, but not for groups. It's very difficult. So I had this idea that I had to figure out a way to make IA feel concrete and um, figure out a way to like play and experiment with different ideas so and different scenarios so that we could become familiar and become the experts. Um, and so the next thing that we did um, was we got some unconventional materials. And I have the board up here. Um, we set up the board. Thank you. <laughs> um, so we, what I did is I bought a, um, a magnetic board um, with a magnetic strip that had um, that I cut up into little tiny pieces and I took those pieces and each piece represented a page of our site or probably like our primary content types of our site and we started out by setting up the board to represent the current state and then we started moving everything around um, to try to figure out like what are our current possibilities are and what those future possibilities are as well. And we created some really quick and dirty uh, user scenarios so that we could run through these, um, these flows and really talk about like what were the SEO priorities, what were the business objectives, um, what were the user needs. And we just had this conversation and identified gaps and opportunities. Um, and the board is something that got us all engaged. We got our hands on it. Um, it gave us a common language. And it also dropped us into um, the conversations that we needed to have, but we didn't know we needed to have. Um, and then, you know, if you're going to do something like this, uh, to create a community or a new initiative, someone will inevitably say, like, what are we doing? Really, what are we doing? And is this the right way to do it? Um, is this a valuable use of our time? Um, I think this is a common question that comes up in those early organizational stages. And I think it can lead to some frustrating conversations, especially if you have to have them over and over and over again like we did. Um, but I think it's a valid question. And I think it's really hard to uh, get people to dedicate an hour of their time every week if that hour isn't aligning with their goals or it could even be getting in the way of making more urgent deadlines. Um, but this conversation helps refine your purpose. It gives you the opportunity to talk about like what's working, what's not working. You can make um, some adjustments and figure out how to make the experience more meaningful. Um, and it helped us to continue to come back to this idea that if we did nothing but familiarize ourselves with the IA, um, that it was worth our time because that meant that we would be ready to respond intelligently and quickly to um, to change, and our I think we all know that our work is about change. Um, but I guess the one thing I would say about this is that this is an essential part of the process of building an authentic community. So um, I think it's a, a really good opportunity, and to know that you can get through it if you get through those initial road bumps. So, um, you know, in the beginning, the process can feel a little awkward and unfocused. Um, at, you know, but eventually, 
it becomes more natural and um, all of a sudden people are talking and people are sharing things and at AVO the IA Guild has become that place where we learn about the decisions that are happening across teams and we've even gotten to a point where we are brainstorming solutions as a group and where we can really see how all of the projects fit together. Um, so it helps us take a more holistic approach to our work and make decisions for the good of the site as opposed to the good of a product. And then, um, you know, the next step is to communicate. And I think there is power in making a formal recommendation regardless of how formal that is. Um, you know, if you have three or more people who are saying the same thing, who can articulate a problem, and um, who can offer up some solutions and a way forward, people really listen to that. Um, so documentation, distributing to like a wide audience, um, and just communicating out is key to putting your ideas into action. And the, the next and the final step is to engage your policymakers. And so what we mean here is your stakeholders, your exec team, your product managers, anybody who has a say in the strategy or anybody who can actually get work on a roadmap. Um, and so by now in the process, you have some assets, you have some artifacts that you've created with this community that now has a shared language. You've done the work to make IA like everybody's problem and you've raised the collective awareness, hopefully across the org. And this is where your storytelling skills really start to kick in. You wanna broadcast this message like loud and proud throughout the organization. And you might need to lobby a little bit. So that means like change the message depending on who your audience is. You might pitch this a little different to the executives than you would to your product managers. Um, and, and like Kate was saying, you know, if people start to hear the same message from different places or the same message over time, they start to think that it's their idea and then you're much more likely to actually like make change happen. What you're asking for here is you're asking for buy-in, you're asking for investment, and you're asking for resources. And what the final goal is, is to actually get your recommendation on a roadmap so that you can uh, see it implemented and, and get it shipped. So we want to leave you with the checklist um, based on our process. And I think this can work as a framework, um, but it's actually much messier in practice. I think you know the main thing that we learned is that we didn't have to ask for permission. And that really what this is about is creating a culture that's open, um, where we're sharing ideas and information. and where we are empowered to make better design and content decisions. Thank you. I think we have time for a few questions, if anybody has questions for us about our IA Guild. Any more questions? Yeah. So the question was, What's, what was one of the biggest challenges and what, what did we learn from that challenge? From getting through, yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, I think that what I had mentioned is kind of getting through the growing pains is one of the hardest parts is when you have a guild that doesn't really belong to any particular team and it hasn't been sanctioned by executives, um, you know, you ha really have to take yourself seriously and you have to figure out how to put a charter together that everyone can get behind and put systems in place. And then the hard part is really getting everyone to really believe in it. And so I think that was, that was the biggest challenge. And we got through it by just having those tough conversations and um, also getting some success under our belt. So we, um, you know, we had one example of one of the, the projects that we, um, that we started from the IA Guild, as we were running through our IA flows, we realized that there was a gap in the user journey, and um, we made a recommendation that we needed this 
pro new product gateway page. And we put a, a recommendation together, distributed it widely. We used IA artifacts to support that argument. And um, it was accepted and it was integrated without a lot of fuss because, as I said, like when you have a good argument and you have the supporting data or the artifacts, um, people are pretty happy to, to go ahead and move forward. Um, I think the main thing is having representatives from all of the teams. And so we would never make a recommendation for a team without having um, a content strategist or a UX designer in that conversation and being heavily involved in making that recommendation. Um, so I think that, that really helped. And they could go back to their team and have the conversations that they needed to have um, to make that happen to kind of like lay the groundwork for that. Yeah, and I think that we were also supporting that, like, you know, we'd hear through, like, I would hear all of the different projects and all the different conversations that all the content strategists were having. And so if I thought that somebody was, like, starting to go off in their own direction, I'd be like, hey, have you guys checked in with IA Guild? You know, and, and really starting to use that language, like, IA Guild was the place to go. Rather than IA Guild stepping on other people's toes, we tried to tried to change that and be like, oh, you're stepping on IA Guild's toes by trying to cowboy this. Say that again? How often do we iterate on our on the recommendations or oh on our IA? Okay. Um, well, we try to work pretty quickly. Um, so it depends on the size of the the project, I think. But if like the, the example that I had just given about the, um, the gateway page, um, I think we had one or two meetings about that. And then all of the work happened um, offline. So we were working together to put the documentation together. And so I think probably that all took about a week or a week and a half. Yeah. But the, the larger projects obviously take more time and coordination and communication. Yeah. yeah. I think PowerPoint is really effective. <laughs> yeah, I think, at, I mean, at least at, at Avo, it's like you can send somebody a Word document with the exact same words in it as a PowerPoint. And, you know, I think that's what we were getting at when we were like, you know, even if, if, even if you're not sure about it or even if you're not sure how formal that recommendation is, there's a lot of power of putting it in a PowerPoint. Yeah, and just make, making sure that you're telling the story, like, from start to finish so that you've thought through every scenario and um, every possible solution. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. Thank you so Thanks, much. Guys.